Have you had your tea yet? Yes? Oh, I haven't. I could just do a black pudding and chips. But look, tell you what, why not settle down to the show where the amateur astrologers play for nothing and our celebrities play for next to nothing. Two glorious guests lined up again tonight. But first, please welcome the lady who appeared in the first soap opera long ago before the Street Dallas or Brookside, Katie Boyle. Thank you. <laughs> Now, Katie, let us into a secret. Do you still use the stuff? I do. I do. And it's the only one that lathers in salt water. <laughs> oh, really? You'll be That's great in the sea. Oh, it's marvellous. So if we see suds in Blackpool, you've been in. Oh, absolutely. Right. I know it well. Now, Katie, with you tonight, you have Anne Duncan, who is an ardent heiress, <laughs> the fair maid in Perth, and now lives in charming Chesterfield with your husband, John. He's a Pisces, isn't he? Louise, who's a Cancer. Marie, a Leo. Yvette, a Libra. That's your three daughters. What a planetary mixture there. How do you manage it? <laughs> do you all get on? Well, at times, yes. Fireworks at times? Fireworks, Very definitely. steamy, those Pisces, you know. <laughs> Once they get your hands on you. Anyway, her main interest, your main interest, are astrology, astronomy, listening to music. What sort of music? Very Dutch. Anything that takes my ear, you might say. Really? Yes. Well, playing squash, I'm very good at that, especially when I sit on people. <laughs> and, um, and you've an identical twin, haven't you? Your sister, Lynn, and also from Perth, and Duncan. <laughs> now let me share with you the most captivating, carefree, cavalier, candid, and charismatic Capricorn this side of Bridlington, Eve Pollard. Green is very you, dear. And so is violent. I mean, violent. <laughs> <laughs> Eve, with you tonight, you have um, Wendy Peters. Now, Wendy, you work as a fashion model. Yes, and I'm not right. surprised, might I add, my dear? Uh, you're a super Scorpio, married to a caring Cancerian, that's Simon. What a lovely combination. Yes, it is, isn't it? Is that all watery and tactile and friendly and fresh? At times. Is it? <laughs> I'm surprised nearly all the time with most Scorpios and Cancerians I know. You have one daughter, Leah, is that yes, right? Yes, that's right. And two granddaughters. You're a grandmother. Yes, certainly. And am. last year you were voted Britain's most glamorous gran. Yes. Now, your hobbies are parasailing, learning Spanish and disc jockeying, and in fact, I've just heard you've applied to join the SAS. Oh, that's right. Yes, in my spare time. Yes, good training. <laughs> you've got good training tonight with Eve. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wendy Peters, everybody. <laughs> and of course, we mustn't forget that you're from Whitby. Wonderful. Hello, Whitby. All right. Now, let's meet a man who is the spitting image of Prince Andrew, David Steele and Woody Allen. What a combination. He's sure to make an impression on us. So please welcome tonight's star choice, Fogwell Flax. Well, I don't know, but I was just saying, you're in a proper up. You were rushing around like mad, weren't you, in your tracksuit earlier? Oh, the things you'll do for a crust, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> now, round one is fairly easy. Bogwell is with us, and he's obviously our star choice. Now, what we're going to do is our two contestants, and well, four contestants, of course, with Katie and Eve, and all of you lot out there, we want you to guess Foggy's sun sign by asking him penetrating perplexities. Now, as you're looking rather perplexed, Katie, would you like to pulverise? Fog. Do I have to? Well, if you want, darling. Well, no, no, I'll be more peaceful. But let's talk about an argument. What would happen if you were witnessing an argument? Would you like to pour oil on uh, troubled water or would you get a spoon and stir? I'd run as far away as possible. You would? <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Very enlightening. Yes, very escaping to Eve. How interesting. Uh, if I were to invite you back to my flat... <laughs> you, you say this every week and no one goes. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> this wasn't in my contract. No. <laughs> and it's terribly untidy. Would that put you off? Mm, no, not unless I had to clean it up, no. It wouldn't put me off at all, no. Right, Anne? Um, <clears throat> would you say that a healthy bank balance made the best sort of reading for you? Um, <laughs> you should see my bank balance, yes, I, yes, <laughs> if, it, I, yes. if it was in good shape. Yes, I'd be happy about that. Very I think, happy. Yes. Well, yeah, I'd be comfortable about mm -hmm. it, yes. He's feeling very comfortable, obviously. Yes. Wendy. 
I would like to ask you, are you a decisive person? I'm not sure. <laughs> <You're> not? <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, generally, yes, yes. I, if, if I make a decision, I, I, I like to go, go after that decision and I feel quite strongly yes, about it. Yes, but you have to do sort of... No, I don't um, do that. Usually I make decisions instantly and you I'm do. usually very impulsive about them. Yeah. I see. Mm, there no we are. help at all. <laughs> uh, Katie. Ah, oh, well, you're going contradictory to what I thought. Um, <laughs> sorry, right, sorry. well now, if, um, if your girlfriend or your wife was sort of playing around on the side, how would you feel about it? What would you do? Two questions, is it? Yes, <laughs> you could be playing rugby, of course. You didn't make that clear. It's depends what they're playing. <laughs> yes, yes exactly. Join no. in <laughs> well, let's say indoor sports. Uh, um, I think I'd probably be, I'd be upset about it, but I would like to investigate. I wouldn't be immediately jealous or rageful. I would, I would like to find out why, first of all. Because it might be my so yeah. you wouldn't burst into a torrent no, I, of tears? No, I'm, I wouldn't You'd fly into Eve. a rage, but I would be upset. Yes. Eve, would you burst into a torrent of tears, my dear, asking Foggy the last question? Only if it ruined my mascara. <laughs> um, would you rather have people round at home, or would you rather go out? Um, I enjoy company, full stop. I, 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 I like to have people around me. I mean, going out or at home, it doesn't really matter. Um, I, like just like, I like to be part of a bunch, yeah, I do. Right. And there we are. Well, I haven't the foggiest idea oh, what oh, sign oh, he oh. is. You said you wouldn't do that. Well, I thanks. promised I wouldn't, but we sort of get these things from heaven and it comes in. Fine. Katie, <laughs> you're from heaven, darling. Oh, Would you like to have a guess with Anne? Well, Foggy we've, yes, sign. we've had a little talk here. And we, well, we are, again, oscillating. I am going between one and the other, being a Gemini. But I'm going to plump for... Libra. Shall we try Libra? Libra. I think Libra. Oscillating, vacillating Libra, that's one. Yes. Eve, Wendy, what do you think? We haven't oscillated, but we've come to the yes. same conclusion. Exactly you the same. Libra as well, uh -huh. my goodness. Lovely yeah. Libra is getting all the votes here. <laughs> is there a lovely Libra in your life? Aha! Uh -huh. What about you, audience? What do you think? What sign do you think Fogwell Flax is? Aries. An Aries? No, not very airy. No. An Aries? You think an Aries? He doesn't feel very airy. We've heard that before. <laughs> Listen, Fogwell, would you please tell everybody your sun sign? I'm Pisces. Oh, <laughs> yep. well, you I'm were all wrong. Well, you see, uh, yes, it was Libra, Gemini, or Pisces. No, well, I'm Aries. afraid that you're all wrong. I mean, no oh, points yeah. for you, Katie. No, no points for you. Terrible. No points Sorry. for you, audience. <laughs> But listen, why do you think they thought, because a Libran is in fact extremely refined, um, loves peace and harmony, uh, very much like the sun sign Pisces. I suppose the main difference is that Pisces is more of a, an escapist sign. You were talking about running away. Are you the sort to run away from things you don't like? Oh yes, if there's a problem, I, you, you know, if there's anything that really gets on me, I, I'm, I'm the person to hide from it. I, I don't like facing up to things until the very last moment, and then I have to face them, and then I'll go and face them. Then, you know. And uh, also, I mean, there's a very much a, a film celluloid link with uh, Pisces. Were you ever into Hollywood or the or the movies, things like that? <laughs> well, I, I not not personally, obviously, it was before my time. But <laughs> <laughs> would you like to watch I, them now? All those old movies. I love movies? all the old films, especially. I mean, there's some great people like like W. C. Fields. He was one of my favourite comedians. I've seen him on the films. I, he used to have great things like. Um, Smile first thing in the morning and get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, look, Pisces is the most romantic, poetic, and psychic sign of the zodiac. Now, if there's a Pisces with you now, look at those eyes. Go on. Look into those pools of dewy drops that reflect all that is tender and charitable in the world. Now, some put it down to their mascara, some to the gin, but I know that if if the eyes are the windows of the soul, then Pisces is the most selfless and saintly of all. If you want to get the best out of yourself, my fishy friends, then dive into artistic pursuits that will allow you to fantasize and use your chic talents. Because you often look at the world through rose-colored glasses. Now, you have a tendency to run away from things you don't like or, or just pretend they haven't happened. Watch your gullibility, as you're often taken in by the more scheming signs, although you're no dunce at it yourself, having led many a person up the garden path. Some of you are quite convinced that the fairies do live at the bottom of your garden, because it would be so much nicer if they did. And you would swear blind that you saw them one moonlit night, and that was the gin. Anyway, your love of others is often shattered into fragments of disillusion if you're let down or used by them. So it's best you spend some of your lifetime helping charities, voluntary organisations, or those less fortunate than yourself. 
although some of you have felt your own world has been turned upside down due to unexpected uranium vibes that have caused an amount of chaos recently. Apart from that, jolly old Jupiter, your, one of your ruling planets, brings the promise of opportunity and optimism. But don't bite off more than you can chew. No matter how hungry you are for success and happiness, it'll come by gently ruminating. <laughs> now, funnily enough, Pisces is a sign of sleep. So, <laughs> it's absolutely true. Pisces is a sign of sleep. But talking about, I mean, all what I've just said there about Pisces, uh, they, they, they have got a wonderful way of not living in this world, unworldly, drawing a veil of perhaps other people over them. Do you find you often have to act in difficult circumstances rather than be yourself? Yeah, well, that's probably why I do impressions, I think. It's a way of escaping. I can be the other people when I'm frightened. If, I'm, if, if something's going wrong and I want to take control, I can sort of, I can become a John Cleese, all right? Right, shut up, shut up, take control of the whole thing. And you, right, and you, come on, turn around, right. See, or if I'm, if I'm feeling frightened, uh, you know, I can, I can, I can hide, and um, or if I want to be refined, I become a sort of royalist. <laughs> Or, or when, when you when you waft on um, wax like about all my, my many my many talents, you know I I I I, 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 can, I can get to, oh, I get quite swept away, Mr. Jones, quite swept away by <laughs> limpid pools, Mr. Jones, limpid pools. You, you really you really move me. Now, if you remain with us, it's now round two, and what I'm going to do is give some peculiar clues describing certain celebrities, dead or alive. Now, all I tell you is that they share the same sun sign as Foggy. That's the sign of Pisces. So, are you ready for this one then? Are you ready for this? Eve, do you want to go first, darling? Why not, darling? Do you want to bash? Why not? Right. Here we go. See if you can get this one. He's a man who likes carrying on with the acid drops and never stops messing about. Kenneth Williams. Kenneth Williams. Be decisive. Kenneth Williams, Wendy. <laughs> Kenneth Williams. Two points. <laughs> Katie and Anne. He wasn't on his tod in The Sweeney by George. Oh, oh um, um, yes, um, George, uh, what's his name? Um, oh. He wasn't uh, on I his tod. So well. uh, Dennis Cole. No, George Cole. No. Can I pass it over to you, Eve? He wasn't on his Dennis tod Cole. in The Sweeney by George. Uh, George Cole? George no, Cole. In the sweetening. No, Dennis you all Waterman. said that. It's wrong. What is it? George Dennis Waterman. You've got no points there. I we said, said it, that. though. We said that. No, I just said it. You now. said George Cole. <laughs> oh, give yourself both two points. I can't cope when women <laughs> shout at me. Start screaming over there. Right. Now, Eve, yes. are you ready, dear? Have yes. you calmed yourself? Deeply. <laughs> Get the eau de cologne out. <laughs> A British born Hollywood star found that diamonds are forever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Liz Taylor. You've got it. Two points. <laughs> <laughs> Katie and Anne. He's always down in the dumps, but up Pompeii. Frank Frank Howard. Two points. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eve, this aged Romeo in Welles has a woman who drives him batting. <laughs> A compo. What's his real name? Only Bill Owen. One? Bill Owen, two points. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now the final question. Here we go. Are you ready for this one? If you wanted to paint at the TV motel, would you settle for a Jill or a Harvey Wallbanger? Uh, I don't. If you wanted to paint at the TV motel, would you settle for a Jill or a Harvey Wallbanger? I never watched the program. No, no, I'm going to pass it over to you. Could you repeat it, please? Repeat could, could the I eat question. It? No, I could repeat it. No, not it. eat <laughs> If you wanted to paint at the TV motel, would you settle for a Jill or a Harvey Warbanger? Jill well, Rossington? Nearly right, but the first name is wrong. Oh. The first name is wrong? Yes. Oh, Jane. Jane, one point each. <laughs> Jane Rossington. Now, what's our scores? They've cheated. They've twisted me round my wee pinky. <laughs> five <laughs> points to five points to Katie and Anne, and nine points to even Wendy. <laughs> well, that's it for part one, and my thanks to Foggy. But don't forget, we've got a bit of a mystery in part two. Toodaloo. <laughs>
welcome back to Star Choice. This, of course, is a part of the show where you actually get to see, can you dress as well as me? <laughs> right? I normally show you my feet, but today I thought you'd like to see the capacious frock. Do you like it? Yes. You're not very enthusiastic about it, <laughs> love, are you? Anyway. Yeah, I'm it's true, and drawers. Anyway, it's the silver, though. It scratches a little. Our next round involves our fun-loving audience. Aren't they gay and alive? Because we've trapped them. But they are 12 volunteers who want to participate, don't you? Yes. yes. One of these 12 is a real Piscean. But all the rest are fakes, aren't you? Right? Now, all that happens is the two teams behind us have to do is ask questions to these kind folk, but the questions can only be yes or no. And if the answer is yes, or you think it's yes, what are you going to do, gang? Put your card up, down. You're going to be a little starlet, aren't you? You are a starlet. You're so sweet. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. Yeah, nice bazaar you must have gone to last week. But anyway. <laughs> Anyway, they're going to guess the Pisces, so let's start now, shall we? They're going to ask yes, no question. So let's start off, Katie, darling. Yes, I'm still here. Would you like to have a quick Why vomit? not? Right. I'm going to ask if any of you are idealistic. Are you idealistic? Are you utopian? You don't know what idealistic means, do you? Can't <laughs> <laughs> you tell them? It means, are you uh, sort of... Idealistic. Not, <laughs> no, that you're not, you're not down to earth. You've got all ideals and they're right up in the air and ambition. Could we have your stars up again for that? Yes, if you are idealistic, you are idealistic, aren't you, darling? I thought so. It's that brooch. Anyway, Eve, would you like to have a go? Quite a few idealistic people. If uh, someone in your family wasn't well, would you like to look after them and do cosset them and take care of them? Oh, you're up with that one, darling. Yes, you all would. You couldn't care less, could you? <laughs> Are they all down the pub when you get home? <laughs> oh, it's a sad thing. I think we've got the answer. You can put them down now, darling. You're sparkling beautifully. Right. <laughs> Over to Anne. Um, would any of you describe yourselves as very disorganised? Are you disorganised? Are you muddled, confused, in a state? Are you in a state? You in a state, darling? No. You're all right? No. Yes, she said no. <laughs> no. You only put it down for a yes. I mean, up for a yes. <laughs> Two muddled creatures over there. Right. Wendy? Yes. Um, who of you are um, criers at old movies, that kind of Tearful, thing? Tearful, emotional. Tearful, emotional people. Do you need the Kleenex? Yes, these oh, are do. Dear. You're a so hard dear. person. <laughs> you don't cry and care about the family. <laughs> Nothing. Would you like to plummet for it now? Just plummet? Yes, well, which I one do you think is a Piscean? She, well, she's put up yes to everything that, uh, that a Piscean should. Uh, we think that that lady with a white blouse. What's your name, Piscean? darling? Sheila. Sheila? Don't say anything yet. Eve. <laughs> Quick, hurry up. I think the gentleman with the striped tie and the glasses. They think it's you. What? No. What is what? it? <laughs> <laughs> the one who saw the murder. <laughs> That's it. You're the butler. But before that, who is the real Pisces? Would you please stand up now? It is you. Well done, Casey. Pisces colours to match. <laughs> we won't go any higher, dear. It's only seven o'clock. Right. <laughs> Katie and Anne, that was great. And now, of course, you've got ten points and you've got nine. Ooh, it's neck and neck. I can't cope. How did they do that? Well, it's very good, anyway. And I must, I've got to apologise to you, haven't I, Wendy? Because, in fact, why, why should I apologise, actually? You yeah. come from Weatherby rather than Whitby. Well, spoff us that. Well, all right, then. Hello, Weatherby. <laughs> Hello, Whitby. Hello, all of you. All begins with a W. You've been there once on a day trip. Yeah, wonderful yeah. place. Yes. Could accept it, really. Could accept yes, it. yes. Fine. Well, now, let's uh, go on to the next round, which, of course, is our... Uh, guest mystère. And this is where I do a bit with my Uranian vibes. Are you ready? Star Choice. Hello, love. All right. Now, of course, you think I'm potty here in the studio, but I'm not, because out in television land, all over this wonderful land of ours, they can see who's next to me. 
Now, being our final round, what we're going to do is try and find out who is sitting in this chair next to me. Now, all I can tell you is that he or she is a Pisces. And I'm going to give, well, max a maximum of five comfortable clues. And then all you have to do, and our teams have to do, is guess his or her identity. But a warning though, if either Eve, Katie or partners are wrong, then they're out of the game. They are kaput. They've had it. So, let's go. Are you ready then? And see if you can guess who's sitting next to me. Lovely complexion. Right. <laughs> are we ready? Napoleon might have said, not tonight, to this actress. Clue there. Napoleon might have said not tonight to this actress. Two, she's foiled all the top British comedians. She's foiled all the top British comedians. Have you got a clue out there, any of you? Don't say a word. Three, her TV break was due to a Drake. Her TV break was due to a Drake. There's a lot of whispering, a lot of furtive conversation going on. Four, she hardly saw eye to eye with Shelley. She hardly saw eye to eye with Shelley. Oh, there's a lot of rummaging going on in the yeah. audience. Well, Have you, nearly, Katie? Are you going to plump for it? Um, well, I, I, we'll be out. Do you want to take the risk? Go on, why Take not? Take a risk. <laughs> why not? This We're is a, gamblers. Risk. This is a risky Chusen. show. Josephine Chusen, it is! Magic her out, here she comes! Splendid, nice to see you. Well done. Well done. Well. And we didn't know whether it was a he or she. No, well, you see, that's because ah. whoever writes these scripts are really good. Yeah, <laughs> they well, give clues away very, very easily. Very friendly to Well, anyway, of course, you're going to get some points for that. How many <laughs> shall we give her? Uh, oh, five, five. Five. I heard it from heaven again. Five. Oh, five you. points. You're going to get thanks to the lady in the back row, Katie. Oh, that is nice. Okay. Thank you. Josephine, now, now Katie got you, and of course a lot of British comedians. Did, uh, did, you, did you find, or do you find still, that, and this isn't being rude, a lot of people know your face but can't put a name? Yes, I thought I wasn't going to be guessed at all. Did that was you my really? first reaction when I asked to be here. I said, don't ever guess me. I said, no, no. Because <laughs> they look at me in tubes and things, you know, and sort of, I know that face. And then by the time they've twigged, I've gone. I've got out of the stall. Where did you actually start? Who gave you really the first break? Well, it was Charlie Drake, as far as television oh. was concerned. Yes, he asked me to be on his show when he was doing, I um, can't remember what it was called, but big BBC Two, just when colour came in, actually. And he wrote me into all his sketches. And you worked with, I mean, I've got the list here, because it's, it's amazing. Ronnie oh, it's Barker, endless. Ronnie Corbett, Dick Emery, Jimmy Tarbuck, Bruce Forsyth, there's yeah. Dawson, Frankie yeah. Howard, Larry Grayson, Bernie Winters, and Charlie Drake. I mean, a lot of people do not realise that it's very often, and most of the time I feel, that it's the foil that actually uh, is the one who's getting the laughs the whole time. It, with, without you, um, there's not well, going to be much to play to, is there? Well, yes, you've got to be awfully good. You've got to be very good and you've got to feed them in the right way. And you've got to adapt yourself to each one because they're all totally different. Have you found that working in, in a, a, a long series, let's face it, in a successful series like Shelley, you have preferred to perhaps working with one stand-up well, comic? Well, that was more... because it wasn't sketches and because one, it was just the one story and it was more like a play every week, that was lovely because one could get in the character and develop it was usually, you know, you're on and off in sort of five seconds and that's the character done. There's a lot of, um, shall we say, heavier numbers or classical or, shall we say, legit stuff. The real Inspector Hound, habeas corpus, etc. Is there anything like that coming up for you soon? Um, there might be a new play in the autumn, which we've just tried out at Leatherhead, so I've hopes with that. But um, I don't mind, so long as I keep doing different things, which and is very Piscean, of course. <laughs> yes, one thing to that. You yes, find that you, yes. you need a slight foggy flax. Oh, that you yes, need. absolutely. You want to do different things and not stick to the one thing all the time. And you're so. more confident playing a role perhaps than yes, yourself. Yes, Like you yes. thought no one would guess you. Yes, absolutely. That's and very Pisces again, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, it's smashing to have you here. Thank you very I'm really much glad you've made me. it and lots and lots of success in your Piscean way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, before we go, I'd just like to answer the Billy Doo from Betty of Beverly. And she asks, do you know who guests are going to be before they come on programme? <laughs> if I did, would I be here? Anyway, what I will tell you is that next week, with Katie and Eve, always remember, if you're feeling down, keep your pecker up. Ta-da!